had a brilliant question from one of our readers. He was going to take his car in for a remap and he just wanted to know what he should do and things he should look out for before he takes the car in for a remap. And I thought that was a really good question. It's something a lot of people overlook. They turn up to get the car remapped or tuned and they come away disappointed because the map has found a problem or a fault that can't be fixed or diagnosed there and then. And it just delays the whole process and causes issues. So we're going to look at some checks that you can do before you take your car in to have it mapped. And also highlight some weak areas that may need to be addressed, particularly if your car mileage is starting to creep up. We really want you to avoid these common problems and pitfalls and just being aware of them and doing these simple checks before you take your car in can make a massive difference to the ease with which your mapper can approach this job. So the first thing you really need to do when you take your car in to get it remapped is a full diagnostic check. So using the OBD port, you may have VAGCOM, there's other little USB devices and Bluetooth devices that you can attach to your laptop and plug into the OBD2 port. And it allows you to read the error codes from the ECU. Now the ECU keeps track of all the problems. So if there's a sensor playing up or something is not right in the engine, it will generally drop an error code in the log. And just reading these off can actually highlight potential problems and pitfalls and it may even highlight some things that you were just not aware of in everyday driving. So if you've got some error codes make sure they're addressed, get them cleared and address any problem and fix it before you take it in for a remap because the remap is going to highlight any weak spots in the engine so if you've got a weak engine it's going to break after you've had it remapped just because you've not addressed that potential weakness or flaw. So further checks you need to do are boost leaks. Now at normal normal boost levels you probably won't necessarily notice it unless you're looking out for it so just check that all of the boost hoses are in good condition that they're all clamped correctly and there are no signs of leaks anywhere down by the intercooler there's usually a plastic pipe and that's quite prone to split or come loose so just check that you're not losing any boost as soon as you've remapped it and you're pushing more boost into the engine it's going to highlight any flaws or defects in the overall intake system and you won't be making the power that you want Wants. and when the tuner's setting the car up he won't be able to fully optimize it because the car is not running at peak efficiency. So I've got a small favor to ask before we move on to the content of this video in more detail please hit that like button it really helps us to get out there please let us know in the comments what you think of this video suggestions on how we can improve them and what topics you would like us to cover another thing that you really need to do before you take your car in is have a full service done so that would include changing the oil changing the plugs changing the fuel filter and all of the other items that would typically be listed in your service schedule just making sure that the car is in top condition will allow your tuner to realize the maximum and potential of your specific engine. It's also worth checking that the oil pressure is good. If the oil pressure is a little low, you may be fine on a standard engine, but when you start running it with a remap or you've tuned it and you're making more power, everything is running hotter, harder and faster. And if you've got an oil supply issue, it will cause other problems. So make sure that the oil is flowing correctly around the engine and you've not got sludge that's built up in there or some other problem that will become evident after you've had it remapped when you take the car home. Now some people also recommend a compression test so this is exactly what it says a compression test tests the compression in each of the cylinders and you, you're looking for them all to be fairly equal and certainly within the manufacturer's specifications if one cylinder is starting to leak then that could be a piston ring it could be a valve seat problem it could be a valve problem itself so get that addressed if the engine is not completely balanced it's gonna it's gonna experience problems when when you've had it remapped or have changed things within the engine to make more power. It's also worth just getting an emissions check done to make sure that the catalyst or the DPF filter if it's got one are working within normal parameters and it just gives you a benchmark to know that after it's been tuned you're still going to meet those emissions regulations in your specific local area. If the car is already starting to struggle to meet the emissions then it's unlikely to meet those emissions regulations after you've had it remapped because you're burning more fuel and if the engine's not been doing it efficiently without 
the specific tuning that you've had done to it is going to really struggle after you've expected a little bit more power from the engine. Make sure your tank is also filled with premium quality fuel. Go for a higher octane or higher cetane fuel and stick with that fuel after it's been mapped. That's the best way of ensuring you get the maximum power from your remap. If you want to keep your costs down and use lower grade fuel then by all means take it to the mapper with that lower grade of fuel in it but let him know and bear in mind that the engine will not be working as efficiently or optimally as possible and if fuel economy was really your concern you can actually ask the mapper to take that into account so instead of going for the maximum power it can be balanced with maximum fuel economy or somewhere in between. Also make a list of all the mods and upgrades that you've had done so when you're tuning a car and it's on the dyno it's really handy to know if there's non-standard parts in there particularly fuel injectors, fuel pumps, air filters, induction kits, exhaust, catalyst removal, anything that makes a significant change to the way the engine works needs to be taken into account and a good mapper should spot most of it but if you've generated the list it really will cut down the time that he spends and he can spend a little bit more time just optimizing your map and making sure your car is running at the very best that it can. Now common weak spots after you've had a map done is the clutch so if your mileage is starting to creep up chances are you're still on the original clutch it's just hanging on in there by the skin of its teeth it's not got much life left so putting extra power through may well cause that clutch to start to slip or degrade or to fail so just do a ch just check your clutch do a hill start in fairly low gear hit the throttle and just see if the engine revs pick up smoothly or if there's a speed up of the engine revs and the car doesn't start to speed up until the clutch starts biting so that's a good way of telling if your clutch is starting to slip or not and it would certainly be worth thinking about maybe upgrading the clutch getting a heavier duty better quality clutch if you're putting more power through a lot of this depends though on how aggressive the remap is going to be and how much extra power Power you are running. If you're just going for a 20 to 30 percent hike in power you can generally get away with most OEM manufacturer spec of parts just as long as they're in good condition and are working well. If you've bumped the power beyond that then you really need to start upgrading all the other parts and components on the engine. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. It's going to help you to avoid the common pitfalls and problems you get when you take your car in for a remap and really set you up for success. So please drop us a like. It really helps us to get out there and if you haven't subscribed please do so and don't forget to stay tuned.